anyway, so I went in to meet with Stuart Kornfeld and Rhodes Raider, and I'd been told no so many times that I just kind of like launched into this 10 minute tirade about why they had to make the movie, and I don't want to hear this, and this is why it's going to work, and yada, da 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 da. I mean, just like a really like, you know, frothy kind of Jeremiah about dodgeball, which is <laughs> looking back is kind of sad. But um, but they uh, but they you know they just sort of stopped me and said no 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 we we get it we like we like the script we just, we want to do it we just want to talk about you and from then on it was really um, you know we uh, not smooth sailing but at least it was sailing yeah you know what I mean you've got the boat yeah right 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 um, and and you know and so then it was at DreamWorks um, and we developed it there and then kind of went up the ladder there and they didn't. Uh, "Quote unquote," see the movie, um, and put it in, were kind enough to put it into turnaround. And Fox, uh, an executive there named Debbie Liebling, uh, loved the script and totally got it and fought for it and uh, at Fox and was you know certainly. So basically, DreamWorks had the option to make the film. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They they paid very little money to option it and you know minimum to for me to rewrite it and and you know not, not I don't think with any real intention to ever make the movie. Uh, Ben's company had just made a had a first look deal with DreamWorks and they were just trying to play nice. Um, and uh, you know, and the script kept getting better because we kept rewriting it and rewriting it and rewriting it. How many rewrites do you think through the process of your first draft that you gave to someone to production that you went through? That's a that's a good question. Um, well, I think by the uh, strictest definition of draft, I would say in the low twenties. Wow. And by the loosest, in the you know low thirties probably. And and I mean that's I don't know how many people here are are writers, but I mean yeah, let's get a little survey. How many writers do we have here? And wow, directors, great. writer directors, and All right. actors. We have some actors here. <coughs> All right. Yeah. So we've got look a, out. We got everybody. We got the whole production crew. Good. Let's make a movie. <laughs> um, uh, so, uh, but, but I mean, the dirty little secret about uh, you know about writing and certainly screenwriting is that it's um, it's only rewriting, and and that's the absolute least sexy thing in the world to, yeah, to sit down absolutely to sit down and, and rewrite a scene for the fifth time you know I mean if somebody told you the same knock knock joke every day for three years you'd want to fucking kill yourself <laughs> and I mean and that's what it was I mean and that's what it was it was only rewriting only rewriting and editing and cutting out and cutting out and and uh, and um, just being ruthless with it, and anybody who who fancies themselves a screenwriter and writes a first draft of the script and thinks they're done, I mean, they're, they're fooling themselves. And that's yeah, not what it is. It's, a it's real really poison out here to do that. Yeah, well, it's yeah. also just a, you know, it's harder than that, and and it's you know, and 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 more re rewarding than that. Um, to I take think. it to the next level. Yeah, yeah. I, I think so. I mean, I think it. I think you do yourself a disservice if if you if you, you know if you write one draft and walk away. I mean. Anyways, um, so, so then let's take it through production. So mm -hmm. you're, you're you're ready to go. You've got your your dream cast in order. What's it like the first day, your first movie on a big set? Uh, well, that's uh, uh, you know I was I was like, sort of expecting to, to freak out a little bit, and I and I never I never really I never I never um, I never freaked out about it. It was I just sort of felt it felt pretty natural to me. Uh, it felt that uh, I felt um, I was I guess I was just too preoccupied with not. Um, fucking up other stuff that I didn't really stop to to think about how how you know lucky I was and how big the whole thing was in comparison to what I'd done before, um, and and I think the there, there's a the week before we started principal photography the first day we shot was the um, the black and white Uber film uh, with Hank Azaria that was the first day uh, which was great and he's, he's just like the nicest guy and you know, totally easy to work with um, but the the uh, the week before we started photography, uh, there's a production meeting where you have it's a final production meeting. You have your AD there. You've got the department heads uh, and like two or three of their assistants or, or you know lieutenants, and so it's like 45 people in a room, and you go through the schedule and you go through the script and you talk about you know what you're shooting every single day and da 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 da, da and how you're going to shoot it and what needs to be there and et cetera et cetera, um, which. That was when I freaked out because there's all these people and we're really gonna do this and I was like, oh fuck, I, I, you know maybe I could pull a hamstring, maybe they won't make me do it, you know all that, yeah yeah no, all that all that stuff and I mean it literally lasted like a sheer sort of panic for you know a few hours and then it was done and after that I, it was it was um, you know it was just the business of of making um, making the movie as good as it can be and having written so many drafts and and. You know, tried so many different jokes. It, it, you know, it was um, 
that was that was the most important part for me is having written the script and rewritten and rewritten and rewritten and talked about it endlessly and rehearsed it, um, you know, in either audition or you know small rehearsal time we had. That going in, I I knew how this, how every single scene worked. It really felt ready. Yeah, prepared. I mean, I knew I knew why it existed in the movie and you know within 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 it what could what changes it could it could um, survive and what it couldn't and what it needed to do and and, uh, and what it didn't and. And uh, you know, it was a 52-day shoot, which was much, much longer than I'd ever done. I'd only done a seven-day shoot on on the Terry Tate stuff. That was the longest I'd ever done. And and um, a 52-day shoot when you've only done seven is, is it's a big change. You know, there's like a, there's a physical exhaustion that that comes in, especially if you're uh, you know the writer as well, because if there's a problem with the script, if there's something that's not working, you know, you can't turn to the guy with glasses next to you and say, "Hey, fix this." I mean, you're the guy with glasses next to you, and you gotta <laughs> figure it out. Um, I notice a lot of the of the student filmmakers when they direct, they it's a power struggle about mm -hmm. how to deal with ego. I noticed on your set that it was very low key, like mm -hmm. you almost, you, you know, the actors responded to you. And you kind of let them take turns, and you said, "Well, I like it like this," but it was a very conversational pace. Can you talk about like, you know, being a director and and how 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 that actually right. works on set? I was mostly drunk most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it was so easy to get along. No, um, I, yeah, I mean, I think I think that uh, that especially when you're doing a comedy, that that if it becomes um, if it becomes a power struggle, like you said, if it becomes about about me as a <laughs> because about me, as opposed to the the, the story or the movie, um, that's the problem. Or if it becomes about an actor, as opposed to the story or the movie, and I'm just a, a firm believer of, of best idea wins, and and that's really the alpha and omega of it. It's it's not about it's you know, at least in my opinion, um, you know, making making a movie or telling a story shouldn't be about um, your ego. Really, and and I think that only gets in the way of trying to do good work, and especially, uh, you know, with with guys like you know Ben Stiller and, and Vince Vaughn yeah, and I mean, legends I mean, in comedy already. Yeah, so. well, yeah, I mean, having having Ben Stiller there on set is you know I've watched him for so long. I'm a huge Ben Stiller fan from the Stiller show that I watched in high school, and and uh, you know yeah, Zoolander, so. and you know meet the uh, meet the parents and Mary, and you know <laughs> there's another little Happy Gilmore uh, little role in that which I love. Your friends and, and neighbors. Your friends and neighbors. He's so good, he's, and your friends and neighbors. And, at any rate, so it was just. Uh, and how were his producing duties versus acting? Was it a bit of both on set? Was it? Well, that was that was um, that yeah. He did both. He was uh, when he was as soon as he put on the White Goodman wig, he was an actor and only an actor, and just, okay. and he was fantastic. He would do, you know, he was a thousand percent committed. He would do a hundred different takes. Um, there's absolutely no vanity in Ben Stiller's comedy, and I think that's why he's so good. He's it's not. Very he's, he's, yeah, he's not. He's not. He's not afraid of looking like a jackass, which I asked him to do over and over and over. <laughs> yeah. and, and he also was able to play two emotions at once, which is a pretty rare skill, I think. But as a producer, um, there are great things about about Ben Stiller as a producer, you know. And there's certainly things that sort of drive you a little crazy, but. The, the, uh, but he's committed to making the yeah, film. Yeah, that and that's yeah. that's I th one of the best things I can say about Ben. Other than you know, Ben as a as a person, he's he's a wonderful person, um, and really generous and and um, you know, cool. Uh, but but as a producer, he it was only only and always about making the movie better and making the movie as good as it could be. And we have um, we have a movie star as a producer. It's great because. They can get things for you that you couldn't get yourself. Certainly, as a first-time director, or even like another powerful producer, there's a certain thing that there's, uh, you know, about being in the room with a with a celebrity, with a movie star, that even you know, I don't though I don't think, uh, you know, Tom Rothman would admit, or any of the studio heads would admit, it's it's seductive, and you wanna they wanna stay in the good graces of, of movie stars because there are so few of them, and they're so valuable that when they say, hey, you know, we need an extra. Twenty-five grand to get the sound mixers that we want. 